This morning we're going to be discussing thermal hair straightening or hair pressing. And let me tell you a little something about this before we go into it. And I've thought for my 27 and a half years of being an instructor that eventually this was going to be gone. But there's several reasons that it's not gone and not going to be gone. First off, children that have extremely curly hair, there is yet to be a relaxer that successfully works on children to take the curl out. When you have this extremely curly hair, if you shampoo it and put it on rollers, it's not going to work. And this is often why hair pressing is done to relax that curl out or to straighten that curl out so you can put a hot thermal iron or curling iron in there and put a style in it. It has its downfall such as moisture, you know, makes it revert back to curly. But I, do, I still do not understand clients that are adults that go to the beauty salon to get thermal hair pressing. And a lot of them's excuse for this is it's not as damaging as a chemical relaxer. But as we discuss this, we're going to find that actually it is as um, damaging, if not more so in a lot of instances. So hair straightening or pressing is a popular service that is also very profitable in the salon. When properly done, hair pressing temporarily straightens extremely curly or unruly hair by means of a heated iron or comb. A gen pressing generally lasts until the hair is shampooed next or comes in contact with moisture. Hair pressing also prepares the hair for additional services such as thermal roller curling and croconole thermal curling. A good hair pressing leaves the hair in a natural and lustrous condition. It's not at all harmful to the hair. And that's a little, um, that's a little misleading because extreme heat is always a little harmful to the hair. Why? Or how? What does it do to the hair to be harmful? It what? It dries it out. What else? Swells the cuticle scales. Don't we use heat and hot oil treatments to open the cuticle scales up? There are three types of hair pressing. The soft press, which removes about 50 to 60 percent of the curl. It's accomplished by applying the thermal pressing comb once on each side of the hair strand. A medium press removes 60 to 75 percent of the curl. It is accomplished by applying the thermal pressing comb once on each side of the hair using more pressure. And I'm going to do a little demonstration in a minute and you'll understand the difference in soft and medium. Then we have our hard press, which removes 100% of the curl. It involves the application of the thermal pressing comb twice on each side of the hair. A hard press can also be done by first passing a hot curling iron through the hair. In any case, a hard press is often referred to as a double press. Before we go into any hair pressing service, the first thing we're going to do is an analysis of the hair and scalp. And y'all know that by now I prefer to start our analysis always with the scalp because oftentimes we'll find things in the scalp that's not going to allow us to go on further so there's no need to analyze the hair because um, hair texture and porosity and condition changes. So if we find something in the scalp, why worry about analyzing the hair at this point? If the client's hair and scalp are not normal, you should give appropriate advice concerning corrective treatments. In the case of scalp abrasions, it's not our job to diagnose the condition, but rather to advise the client to see a physician, a physician or a dermatologist. If the hair shows signs of neglect or abuse caused by faulty pressing, lightening or tinning, recommend a series of conditioning treatments. Failure to correct Dry and brittle hair can result in hair breakage during hair pressing. Burnt hair strands cannot be conditioned. Now what that means to us, it says it cannot be conditioned. Yes, we can put conditioner on it. And yes, they may stay on there two, three, four weeks. But if we have burned the hair ends, they're gone. You know, a matter of when, when is the question. Remember to check your client's hair for elasticity and porosity. Under normal conditions, if a client's hair has good elasticity, it can safely 
be stretched about 50% of its original length. And we know that that's when the hair itself is wet. If it's um, of good elasticity and the hair is dry, it will stretch about 20% of its length and return. If the porosity is normal, then the hair returns to its natural wave pattern when it is wet or moistened. So we can always tell if we've done extreme damage to some client's hair if we've pressed it one time and then when we go and wet it, it doesn't go back to curly, we know we have messed up the elasticity of that hair. And we can really mess up the elasticity by putting too much heat and too much tension on the hair as we press it. We have a caution that under no circumstances should hair pressing be given to a client who has a scalp abrasion, a contagious scalp condition, a scalp injury or chemically damaged hair. Chemically relaxed hair should not be pressed. So you've got a client that's been getting a chemical relaxer and you would like to, or they would like to go back to pressing now. All you can do is as they get new growth and come to you, you can press that new growth. But remember, most of your injuries with hair pressing occur in the scalp area where we turn the iron too quickly and it brushes the scalp. A careful analysis of the client's hair should cover the following points. The wave pattern, we want to know how much wave or curl is in there so we'll know how much heat or tension to use on it. The length of the hair, the texture of the hair, whether it's coarse, medium, fine, or very fine, and we know by now that fine hair will not tolerate a lot of the things that coarse hair will. The feel of the hair, whether it's wiry, soft, or silky. The elasticity. The shade of the hair, whether it's natural, faded, streaked, gray, tinted, or lightened. In the case of gray or, or white hair, or hair that's been lightened a lot, if we use a real hot pressing comb on it, then we're going to eventually give it the scorched look or the dingy, dirty look. The condition of the hair, whether it's normal, brittle, dry, oily, damaged, or chemically treated. And the condition of the scalp, whether it's normal, flexible, or tight. Now let's stop and discuss the scalp a little bit here. We know that a normal, healthy scalp should not be real tight. If you will notice people that are balding, the reason those spots shine is because the scalp is literally so tight that it's closed up the follicles. So if we've got a real tight scalp, and we use a lot of pressure and a lot of heat on the hair, we're going to have a lot of damage from that. On the other hand, if the scalp is excessively loose, as we put some tension on there with the thermal iron, with the pressing iron, then we're more apt to touch that scalp with our iron. So, you know, normal scalp is what we're looking for. If you're wondering or don't know how to test what the scalp is, put your hands in the hair and wiggle. A tight scalp's not going to do much wiggling. A really flexible scalp, you're going to see wrinkles appear all in the forehead by simply massaging with your fingers to see what it does. It's important for us to be able to recognize individual differences in hair texture, porosity, elasticity, and scalp flexibility. Guided by knowledge, we can determine how much pressure the hair and scalp can handle without breakage, hair loss, are burning from a pressing comb that may be adjusted to the correct temperature. Variations in hair texture have to do with the diameter of the hair, whether it's coarse, medium, or fine, and also the feel of the hair, whether it's wiry, soft, or silky. Touching the client's hair and asking specifically about hair characteristics will help you to determine the best way to treat a client's hair. Now I want to give you a good example of something here as we start pressing that's going to make you stop and think. When we shampoo and blow dry this client's hair, it's going to be this big. Okay. When we press it, it's going to lay down flat. Now keep all of that in mind. It's going to look like they've got a whole lot less hair because the curl has now been pulled out to straight. Is the individual hair strand diameter now increased or decreased? Is what? That's the answer I always get. How did we decrease the diameter of the hair strand with pressing? 
Uh, what does heat do to the cuticles? It will increase it because the heat raises the cuticle scales. So we say it's increased, but everybody looks at it and says it looks like it's so much less hair. But what was pulling the hair out was the curl. It wasn't the diameter of the hair strand itself. So keep in mind that this is increasing the diameter of each individual hair strand, although it appears like we've decreased a lot of the hair. Coarse, extremely curly hair has qualities that make it difficult to press. It has the greatest diameter to start with. And during the pressing process, it requires more heat and more pressure than medium to fine hair. Medium curly hair is the normal type of hair that cosmetologists deal with in the beauty salon. It doesn't create any special problems for us. It's the least resistant to hair pressing. It generally, whatever we want it to do and work with it, it does it. Fine hair, on the other hand, requires special care. To avoid hair breakage, less heat and pressure should be applied than for other hair textures. Coarse and medium hair has three layers, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. Fine hair has only two layers, the cortex and the cuticle, so we know it has a smaller diameter. Wiry, curly hair may be coarse, medium, or fine. It feels stiff and hard and glassy. Because of the compact construction of the cuticle cells, it's very resistant to hair pressing. It requires more heat and pressure than any other type of hair. The condition of the client's scalp can be classified as normal, tight, or flexible. If the scalp is normal, proceed with the analysis of the texture and elasticity of the hair. If the scalp is tight and the hair coarse, press the hair in the direction in which it grows to avoid injury to the scalp. The main difficulty with a flexible scalp is that we might not apply enough pressure to press the hair satisfactorily. Be sure to keep a record card of what you do, and here's where we run into problems and cause all kind of excess damage to the hair. She comes to us today and get a press. We know now that raises the cuticle scales. We can't add anything back to it to change that condition once we've pressed it, can we? Then we use the thermal irons on it. That's adding insult to injury. So we raise them a little higher. We put the curl in and put the style in. She goes home and this afternoon it's going to rain. And her hair reverts back. So she goes to the next door neighbor because she's not going to come pay you again. She gets it pressed again. She's, due to, she's scheduled to come in and see you in a week. So she goes along today's Monday, and about Thursday it comes another rain shower. And she goes back to the neighbor, gets it pressed and curled again. So that's been Monday, Monday night, Wednesday. So every time she comes, we've got to question her. That brings on more retouches. Every time um, moisture gets to it, it reverts back, and they want it done again. So don't assume that just because you haven't done it in a week that it hasn't been done. And you've got to address the hair, you know, each time with that. So that means when she finally comes back to you next Monday, you've got to do some reconditioning treatments, apply some moisture, apply some protein. And that's where hair pressing becomes more damaging than chemical relaxing. It's also a good idea to question the client about any lighteners, tints, color restorers such as metallic dyes or other chemical treatments that she's used on her hair. A release statement should be used for hair pressing as with all services that will protect the stylist from responsibility for accidents or damages. Effective conditioning and treatments involve special cosmetic preparations for the hair and scalp, a thorough brushing but at this point, we want to stay away from the scalp with our brush again. Also, scalp massage. We want to loosen that scalp up some if it's not flexible. Applying a conditioning treatment usually results in better hair pressing. The use of an infrared lamp is optional depending on the type of treatment being given. A tight scalp can be made more flexible by the systematic use of scalp massage or hair brushing. The client benefits because there is better circulation of blood to the scalp, and we know that better circulation of blood to the scalp makes for healthier hair. Healthier hair presses better than unhealthy hair. 
Then we want to talk about our pressing combs. There are two types of pressing combs, regular and electric. And I've got one of each here to show you. And they're different besides being electric and stove heated. This is a stove heated one that needs cleaning. It's got all types of carbon and all on there that's going to wind up on somebody's hair. This is electric. You don't have to worry so much about testing the temperature of it unless you have a person that's got very fine hair. These are not as popular because they don't get that hot. They're thermostatically controlled. They get to a certain temperature and that's the end of the road for them. But I want you to notice something else we're going to discuss later. The teeth are finer in one than they are the other. That means it gives a finer press. This is going to give a coarser press. And we have some of both back there. I don't have a lot of the electrically heated because they don't work that well. Most everybody prefers the um, stove heated. But I did want you to notice the teeth because we're going to discuss them in a minute. And I'm going to show you how to use them on the hair. Another thing I also want you to look at on the iron is look at this smooth part here and how it's rounded. That's what most of the pressing is done with. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's do a little pressing. That's also the part of the iron that we've got to worry about burning our client with. We're going to put the teeth in as close as we can to the scalp. And then we're going to flip that iron so that that smooth part pulls down the hair. All right. That's one side of it. We go to the back side, and even with the soft press, we do it again. We put our iron in close to the scalp, and we want to be careful and look when we flip that iron up to make sure that we're not touching the scalp. And if you'll notice, the smooth part is actually what's doing your pressing. Either type, whether it's electrically heated or stove heated, should be, should be constructed of either good quality stainless steel or brass. The handle is usually made of wood. That's so we don't go burning ourselves with it. Wood does not readily absorb heat. The space between the teeth of the comb varies with the size and style of the comb. A comb with more space between the teeth produces a coarse or open looking press while a comb with less space produces a smoother press. Pressing combs also vary in size. Some are short, and they're meant to be used with short hair, while long combs are used with long hair. There's also what we call a temple comb, and the teeth are going to be a lot shorter on it, and the comb itself is going to be a lot shorter. Where do you think a temple comb would be used? Right around here where some fragile hair is. And although we call it a temple comb, couldn't we use it right around here too? It's smaller so we don't have as much space to worry about um, burning our client. It may be a good idea to temper a new pressing comb as if, if it is made of brass. Tempering allows the brass to hold heat evenly along the entire length of the comb. That gives better results when used on your client's hair. Another thing we want it to hold even heat for is we're not going to press one strand and stick it back in the stove and wait on it to warm up again. We want it to hold some heat so we can do several. And while we're doing those several strands, we've got another comb in there heating up. And then when this one gets um, cool enough, it's not working anymore, we put it in there. And with stove heated, we always test it on paper to make sure if it scorches that paper, then there's a good chance it's going to scorch that hair. Another good reason to temper iron is to burn off any polish the manufacturer may have used to coat the comb. If the polish is not burned off, the comb may stick to the hair, causing scorching or breakage. And remember, whatever's on that comb, part of it's going to wind up on that hair. To temper a new pressing comb, place the comb in the heating appliance until it is extremely hot. Remove the comb and submerge or coat it with petroleum or pressing oil. 
Let it cool down naturally, then rinse under hot running water to remove the oil. Notice, <coughs> excuse me, notice it didn't tell you to dunk it in hot water, I mean in cold water to cool it down. Doing things like that is what causes it to lose its temper. Y'all remember losing our tempers when we were in um, thermal waving and curling? How are we going to heat the comb? Depending on what they are made of, combs vary in their ability to accept and retain heat. Regular pressing combs may be heated on gas stoves or are heated electrically. While the comb is being heated, its teeth should face upward and the handle should be kept away from the fire. After heating the comb to the proper temperature, test it on a piece of light paper. If the paper scorches, allow the comb to cool slightly. Test it again before applying it to the hair. Electric pressing combs are available in two forms. One comes with an on-off switch. The other is equipped with a thermostat that has a control switch indicating high or low degrees of heat. There is also a straightening comb attachment that fits the nozzle of a standard handheld dryer. It's less damaging than an electric comb or an oven heated comb. And what they're talking about now, it fits, it's round like this and you fit it on the nozzle and then it has the teeth that come out. And for hair that's not extremely curly, that works well. You can pull out enough of the curl that then the thermal iron will, um, you know, put curl in it. I want to tell y'all a little history of hair pressing. Y'all interested in this? Or either I'm going to weave a tail for you. And you can figure out which one is which. And we all, again, think we're pretty smart. We work on computers, and people have been smart enough to build those computers to where they do all kind of wonderful things. And we have our cars and all kind of stuff. But people have been smart for a long time. And back in history, um, they had this extremely curly hair and didn't know how to manage it or whatever, but the only thing they could do was braid it. And so somebody got the bright idea or realized for some reason that heat would take curl out. So they made their eating utensils and all that back then. Y'all realize that. You know, we didn't have a manufacturer. We didn't run to Walmart, or they didn't run to Walmart and buy eating utensils. So I don't know if this would come before the ironing of the clothes where you would press the, put the iron in the fireplace and let it get warm, whatever. But the first hair pressing was done with an eating fork. And it was put in the fireplace, you know, on the edge of the fireplace, and let it get hot, and then take and pull it through the hair to get the curl out. You believe that? Think that's the truth? Mm -hmm. Do what? Could be. be. Ain't quite sold you on it. That is absolutely the honest to goodness truth. That's how hair pressing become to be. Then they begin to manufacture the combs. Cleaning the combs, and you've already heard me stand here and fuss about that one having the carbon and hair and everything else on it. I ain't got to worry about the germs on it because it's heated hot enough, it's killing the germs. But it's leaving the carbon and pressing cream and everything else on it. The pressing comb will perform more efficiently if it's kept clean and free of carbon. Wipe the comb clean of loose hair, grease, and dust before and after each use. The intense heat keeps the comb sterile once all loose hair or clinging dirt is removed. Remove the carbon from the comb by rubbing the outside surface and between the teeth with a fine steel wool pad or fine sandpaper. Then place the metal portion of the comb in a hot baking soda solution for about one hour, rinse and dry. The metal will acquire a smooth and shiny appearance. Pressing oils and creams. Do you have to use pressing oil or cream on anybody that gets a hair press? No. But most people's hair benefits from it. Prepare the hair for a hair pressing treatment by first applying pressing oil or cream. Both these products have the following effects. They make hair softer. 
They prepare and condition the hair for pressing. And remember, since the heat opens up the cuticle scales, some of that oil is going inside. They help prevent hair from burning or scorching. They help prevent hair breakage. They condition the hair after pressing. They add sheen to pressed hair. They help hair stay pressed longer. The downside of all that, if we put too much, it gives it an oily, greasy, glassy effect. Makes the hair hold, hang limp. It won't hold a style. It also, if we put too much pressing cream or oil on it, causes a lot of smoking that we don't need. You know, we look over there at the hairdresser and we can't see the hairdresser or the customer for smoke boiling up everywhere. A hard press is recommended when the results of a soft press are not satisfactory. So it's best to always try the soft press first because it's the least damaging. The entire comb press procedure is repeated for a hard press. Pressing oil should be ha added to hair strands only if necessary, meaning we went through it the first time adding uh, oil. Why have we got to add it again? A hard press is also known as a double comb press. Then we have our touch-ups. Touch-ups are sometimes necessary when the hair becomes curly again due to perspiration, dampness, or other condition. The process is the same as for the original pressing treatment, except we don't shampoo, and we know we want to be careful about doing pressing too much. Some safety precautions. The injuries that can occur in hair pressing are of two types those that are the immediate results of hair pressing and that cause physical damage such as burnt hair that breaks off, burnt scalp that causes either temporary or permanent loss of hair and burns on the ears and neck that form scars. That's one type. The other type are those that are not immediately evident but can later cause physical damage such as a skin rash if the client is allergic to pressing oil or the breaking and shortening of the hair due to overly frequent hair pressings. The best thing about um, pressing cream or oil is that you should get it without any perfume in it. They use perfumes or whatever, so don't. that's what usually causes allergies. Good judgment should be used to avoid damage with consideration always given to the texture of the hair and condition of the scalp. The client's safety is assured only when the stylist observes every precaution and is especially careful during the actual hair pressing. We need to avoid excessive heat or pressure on the hair and scalp, too much pressing oil on the hair because it attracts dirt and makes the hair look greasy and artificial, perfumed pressing oil near the scalp if you think the client may be allergic, Overly frequent hair pressing, which weakens the hair. We also need to keep on hand 1% gentian violet jelly in case we have a scalp burn. Apply the burn cream or gentian violet jelly immediately. Some reminders and hints on soft pressing. Keep the comb clean and free from carbon at all times. Avoid overheating the pressing comb. Remember, we don't want it losing its temper. Test the temperature of the heated comb on a white cloth or white paper towel before applying it to the hair. Adjust the temperature of the pressing comb to the texture and condition of the client's hair. Use the heated comb carefully to avoid burning the scalp, skin, or hair. Prevent smoking or burning of hair during the pressing treatment by drying the hair completely after it's shampooed and avoiding excessive application of pressing oil over the hair. I always have hated to come by a student and then pressing hair, and I can hear, <laughs> sounds like you dropped water in hot grease. And that's because they didn't dry the hair sufficiently, figuring the heat from the pressing comb is going to dry it, and it is. Use a moderately warm comb to press short hair on the temples and back of the neck. You may also use a temple comb, which is about half the size of a regular pressing comb. Some special considerations. You should heed certain precautions and safeguards when dealing with the following situations. Pressing fine hair. Follow the same procedure as for normal hair, being careful not to use a hot pressing comb or too much pressure. To avoid hair breakage, apply less pressure to the hair near the ends. 
After completely pressing the hair, style it. Pressing short, fine hair, extra care must be taken at the hairline. When the hair is extra short, the pressing comb should not be too hot because the hair is fine and will burn easily. A hot comb can also cause accidental burns, which are very painful and can cause scars. In the event of an accidental burn, immediately apply 1% gentian violet jelly to the burn. Pressing coarse hair. Apply enough pressure so that the hair remains straightened. Pressing tinted, lightened, or gray or unpigmented hair requires special care. Lightened or tinted hair might require conditioning treatments depending on the extent to which it's been damaged. Gray hair may be particularly resistant, but we've got to remember it being resistant, we want to use more heat, more pressure, but more heat gives us dingy looking hair. To obtain good results, use a moderately heated pressing comb applied with light pressure. Avoid excessive heat as discoloration and breakage can occur.